So regardless of what you call it, whether you call it a transition or a flare, it's important that you understand what's happening and why it's important to have five phases for a landing. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. So in 2016, the FAA, for the first time in about 30 years, changed the way they talk about and teach landing light airplanes. Um, and I'm gonna say in this video that I think they're wrong. Hopefully they're up for a friendly debate. Um, but let's look at what they're saying first. If you look at this figure here, they're telling, they're showing this airplane coming in at 78 knots, slowly losing airspeed as it comes on to short final, slowly losing more airspeed as it crosses the fence and slowly moving, losing more airspeed until it arrives, in the words of the FAA, at an altitude that is very few inches off the ground. Now, I will say this, I'll throw them a bone. At sea level, in a training aircraft with only two people on board, this technique can work pretty good. It really can. You get this nice sort of blended, you know, round out and flare. And even if you time it wrong, if you end up high, training airplanes sort of give up feet first, right? They give up with their wheels first. But the way this shows up in my life as an active flight instructor, what would really happen to you if you're landing that way or learning to land that way is eventually, someday, you're gonna have a passenger in the back, you'll have a high density altitude, maybe you're in an airplane like a Mooney or a Cirrus or a Bonanza or a 182, something with a big heavy nose, and you're not gonna time it perfectly. You're not gonna time it so that you arrive just a few inches off the ground. You're gonna time it someday so that you arrive like five feet off the ground, only those big airplanes don't give up feet first, they give up nose first. And I, if I had a dollar for every guy that called me and said, hey, what happened with my landings? They were perfect until I upgraded to the 182. So let's look at how you actually land a light airplane. Let's, let's build on 120 years of knowledge. <laughs> and uh, it has to be done in five phases. First of all, we're gonna have a stable airspeed. If I see you losing airspeed on final, short final over the fence, I'm gonna think you've got aeronautical issues. So we're gonna keep a constant airspeed, keep your nose down, keep 65 knots in the wings, over you know 65 knots of airspeed if you're flying a 172 or a Piper Warrior. You have an aiming point in your window. That is the one point in your window from which everything else is moving out. There's only one point that that's happening, right? Now you have what, we, what I'm calling a trigger reference point, 100 feet in front of that aiming point. When that point disappears, transition your eyes to the end of the runway and bring the aircraft to a level pitch attitude, maybe a few inches off the runway, six inches off the runway, a foot off the runway. See, in this case, you're not trying to time it so perfectly. You've rounded out to a level pitch attitude and now you begin the process of flaring the aircraft. And yes, airplanes do flare. Let's define the word flare. A flare is an ever widening gap, right? Like, hey, those bell bottom jeans, they flare out at the bottom, right? That's all it is. It's an ever widening gap. So the flare is the active process of increasing your angle of attack. We've used that word for over a hundred years. I'm gonna to continue to use it, it works great. The ever widening gap. So once you transition your eyes to aiming point two, you've looked all the way down the runway, now it's your job to flare the aircraft such that you stall the main wing or get close to the stall, and maybe even hear the horn, um, just the process of getting slower. <laughs> At the exact moment the main wheels touch the ground with the longitudinal axis aligned with and over the center line of the runway while protecting the nose wheel. Um, all of that information as you're pulling to flare, when you lose the horizon straight ahead, just let your eyes fall left to the Lindbergh reference. You'll get all the information you need there about drift, pitch, yaw, roll, altitude, all of that sort of stuff is through the Lindbergh reference and you will flare the aircraft there such that you end up with the nose wheel as high as it is in a soft field takeoff. And this is why slow flight over the runway is not such a great idea for learning that landing attitude 
uh, because slow flight over the runway is done at 55 knots, right? So if you're if you want to do slow flight over the runway, use it to practice timing your round out and then fly the whole runway, you know, use it doing slow flight at 55 knots, kind of a fun exercise, but not related to your sight picture and landing, which is much higher, slower, more like a power off stall, or like I said, a soft field takeoff. So watch this exercise that I do with students where we do a high speed taxi in the soft field takeoff configuration for the full length of the runway. And that's really just to memorize how high the nose needs to be and to get comfortable looking at the Lindbergh reference to get the data you need uh, to know that everything is happening the way you want it to. A lot of people don't know how much to flare. Okay, we, we were looking at when to round out earlier, right? When that point 100 feet in front of your aiming point disappears. And then we start this process of the flare, right? Where we're transitioning the airplane in an attempt to get the main wing to stall at the exact moment the main wheels touch the ground with the longitudinal axis lined up with and over the center line. That's theoretically a perfect landing. Uh, we're all still trying for that one, by the way. <laughs> um, so, you know, I have a belief that for every problem in an airplane, there's a solution called where you should be looking and when you should look there. Um, visual references are everything. If you don't believe me, try flying in the right seat. If you're used to the left seat or vice versa, you'll feel like you don't know what the heck you're doing. Um, so it's good to condition yourself to build in, uh, you know, trust in the references you'll need to keep the airplane on the ground with the nose wheel high, which is what you want when you're flaring. So what we're gonna do is an entire, we're gonna go down the whole runway. This is a high speed taxi. We're gonna go down the entire runway with our nose wheel off the ground, intentionally blocking our forward vision. The idea is we have to learn how to trust our Lindbergh reference and get the airplane, uh, just keep it on the center line and when we come back into flare next time, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get the airplane back to this picture. So, you know, the extent to which we can memorize it um, will help contribute to our success there. We don't want to lift off. That's one of the things you might do by accident. So just remember, it doesn't take much power to do this. I mean, I'm at a thousand right now. Final approach path is clear. Our traffic is on crosswind. And here we go. I'm going to get on the center line. And I'm going to give us maybe 1,400 RPM. Let's see if that works. And then I just get the nose wheel. Oh, let's try 15. Get the nose wheel totally off the ground. There it is. Now, I cannot see forward. I am using my Lindbergh reference, and you should be using your Lindbergh reference right there, to keep the airplane right on the center line. I can see everything I need, assuming there's not a camel in the middle of the runway. I can see everything I need to see right out through my Lindbergh reference. I can tell if I'm moving right. Watch this. I will intentionally move right. And now I can move left. Watch this. I will intentionally move left. See how we're picking up speed? Be careful. I had to power back a little bit there. And while we're doing this, we are gaining confidence in landing the airplane because this is the picture we want to see at the end of our landing. All right? So if you can, do this at, a, at an airport like Oakland where there's a control tower watching your back because, you know, at a non-towered field, going the length of the runway without being able to see forward is a little dodgy. Um, not that I believe anyone's going to use the runway, but at, the, at a towered airport, at least somebody else has your back, right? So now one of the questions that students have all the time is how much should I pull and how fast should I pull? Um, and that's why you're looking at the Lindbergh reference. You're going to get all of the data you need right there because there really is no scientific answer to that. <laughs> I can't say that you use X amount of force to pull and you pull at X speed. This is all going to depend on how heavy you are, what kind of airplane you're flying, um, what the density altitude is. So the real art of learning to land, assuming you've done all the other things right, you've got your airspeed under control, uh, you've picked a solid aiming point, you know when to round out, and now you begin the flare. Uh, you know where you want the flare to end up, right? We just looked at that in the high-speed taxi. So the art of landing, the butt time in the seat, the skill you're really trying to learn and master, is during that flare, assuming all the other things are right, is looking at the data. Did you pull too fast? Are you starting to go up? Or did you pull too slow? Is the ground coming up at you, right? So you just learn how to flare the airplane such that you end up with the nose wheel high uh, by looking in the right spot.
All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. Uh, huge thanks to the patrons. There's tons of bonus content going up there. You can find that at patreon.com slash learn TFP. Also, a huge thanks to the sponsors. Remember, if you renew your AOPA membership, select Pilot Protection Services. That'll get your back covered. Um, also, we have a free video at learnthefinerpoints.com. If you haven't seen that yet, you should come and get it. Also, a full three-day trial, a free three-day trial for our Ground School app. So if you're a rusty pilot or you want to pick up some tips you might not have you know, heard during your private training, definitely download the app get the free trial and see if that's something that you could benefit from. Uh, big thanks to you, the best fans on the internet, for watching this video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share far and wide with your friends. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best.